What's up everybody and welcome back to the sea. What do we have on the show today? Today we have an Amiga 500 hard drive and O30 from GVP, Great Valley Products. This is the A530 Turbo and this comes to me all the way on the other side of the world from Mr. David. What is wrong with it? It doesn't work. I've already tested this and it does absolutely smurfly nothing. Three screws, one, two, three. The lid pulls off. You have four screws for a hard drive mount. And we'll see what's inside. Three. You flip it over. Pull the case out. Well, number one, the dude is mi the the fan is missing. We have an 882, 881 slot. We have an 030 PGA at 40 megahertz, 40 megahertz crystal, the mock controller. That's the same that's used in a lot of the chips for control. A custom GVP uh, chip with a 92 4.5 GVP ROM. Bunch of jumpers and some things and a stick of RAM. GVP products A530 Revision 5. So to test this puppy, we're going to remove this. And we're going to be using the ZIF 500 because why not? Now, the GVP, you can mod, so you do not need a power supply, except I have the power supply. It's the same DIN as the CD32. 25 watts in this massive beefcake thing. So, plug that in. This gets power. This goes onto the sidecar of the 500. In my case, the ZIF 500. I will plug in my Amiga power supply. I remember the days of the Amiga 500 with its monstrosity of cables everywhere. Craziness. This is off. We're going to turn the monitor on. I'm going to have to hook up a GoTech because I don't have any bootable devices. And we're going to load the GVP software. That is called Fast Prep. It is part of uh, GVP's standard setup. And then we're going to have to put a Zulu in it. I have a Zulu Mini I'm going to put in here and it'll Give it some hard drive. I did find a SCSI cable, so we're gonna. I'll just plug that in in advance. Uh, it's keyed, so you can only screw it up one way. GVP install. Hey, I need a mouse. All right, so it's booting GVP Fast Prep, to which I cannot continue because I do not have a freaking keyboard. So let me get my other Amiga out, and we'll do that one. And just like that, we're back with the Chicken Lips Red Rev Five. Chicken Lips because it has the the, the high-tech Commodore Chicken Lips key. So this, of course, has an actual floppy disk in it and my GoTech, which it's going to try to boot. This is Kickstart 204, I think. I forget. Yes. 37175 2.04. Works fine, right? You saw her booting. I'm going to turn it off and we're going to hook up the GVP. Okay. GVP is installed. Let's see what we get. Energize. Uh, GVP Fast Prep is in the drive. So it should go tech right away. Got so many tools and things lying around the place. Alright. No. Yes. This will just tell me if it sees anything. There's no available drives. That's fine. I'm just going to quit. Quit and see if we see RAM or anything. Load, workbench, whoops, wrong operating system. All right, so we have no memory. We have no nothing. So there's no power, nothing. We're plugged in, we're on, nothing works. Give her a wiggle. This should light up. There we go, that'll light now. While I'm waiting on that, I'm gonna pop this card in my machine and copy some WinUAE crap to see what it says. Do we get any RAM? Nothing. One mega chip. So it's just not working. Um, CPU. CPU. Unknown command. Let me uh, let me boot ATK. All right, we have a 68,000. So it's not seeing the CPU. It's not seeing anything. Uh, let's check something here. Turbo on. We have a jumper here that needs to be connected because of uh, the game selector mode. 
there's metal bits in here or is that chopped off third pin it's chopped off third pin on a two pin jumper so turbo off opens the circuit turbo on doesn't all right i'm gonna hit this with a jumper let's see if that helps turn this back on turn this on now i have a solid hard drive light and endless crashes endless reboots that's what it was doing before let me reboot reset circuit still works it's just stuck in this I don't know so what do you do you can plug and wiggle and jiggle and do whatever let me load a workbench 2 point whatever here so if I turn the GVP off and turn the unit on this should still function like a regular Amiga I'll get my kickstart screen and everything's good 37175 kickstart 2 directory opus and one gig of hard drive space perfect that's fine by me quit pull this card out now for this monstrosity here I'm going to be using my Zulu Tiny the micro SD one seen that in the past on my Zulu cards I'm going to put some of these screwy dudes on there and get this kind of sitting in here. Make there you go. How's that look? I put, I hot glued some of these brass thing, rise standoffs with a plastic washer and it is sitting right on that SCSI cable. It's not on the SCSI cable, it's on the holder and it is literally right next to the bird. Look at that. I mean, it just squished in there. It's tight. Will it work? Uh, probably not. 4008 series, you could do a jump, uh, like a slice and pull something off of a rail power. You might be able to do that on these. Do I want to do it? Not with this one. Because I have a power supply, turning the unit on. Doesn't do anything until the Amiga is on. I'm going to undo this GoTech and energize. I saw a SCSI blink and we get purple. Purple nothing of nothing and stall. That so I have to first review some jumper settings. Uh, Amiga.resource.cx or BBOAH. That's a big book of Amiga hardware. I have a booting boot a card with three or two point one on it to match the ROM. It's in the spec size of the gig partition that this could handle with the four point five GVP ROM. Uh, big book of Amiga hardware. Good site if you got a pop-up blocker. I use U-Block Origin, best one there is. GDP A530, here we go. So my jumpers are pretty much the same. All right, I don't know. You know what I haven't tried? Well, we have these comparator chips right here. Every GVP I've ever worked on has blown out. Let me get some new ones, and we're just gonna swap them and see what we get. Being an Amiga hoarder, being an Amiga, being an Amiga custodian, I have acquired many things through the years. eBay, not you. Others. That's one. These are some sockets. Uh, VL buffers, not those. You figure I write on here what these are. Ooh, that's a little... Is that bent or my eyeballs are doing the trick? That might be another one. I can't read these things. That's the problem. First things first! Alan Cooper! Yes. Alright. Let's, uh... Let's just put these aside. Let me get a chip puller. Let's pull these out. I don't have the custom ones. It's a PAL. There you are, you evil booger. Let me grab my reader. Let's grab this pickle. 16 VAH. Bink. XG Pro. 16 VA. Gotcha. Read. All ones. 
What does all ones mean, guy? Oh, look at that. Your whole damn thing is blank. Blank check. What is my deal? Whoa. What is the deal with me and devices that are losing their code? From what? Is there like electromagnetic shock on the freaking on the on the in the in the, in the, in the mail or something? This is like the third board I've had that's had wiped pals or gals. Eleven dollars. U thirty five. That's exactly what I pulled out. Eleven bucks. I'll see you guys in a second, which might be. Weeks! In with the new. Supposedly these are pre-programmed, ready to go. Oh, okay, that's it. Oh, I need all my stuff. Um, power on, power on, here we go. Do we have, oh, we have a light on the SCSI dude. We have a light, we have a, <gasps> it works. It's working. And it gurued. <laughs> Let's click the button. Look. <sighs> Mortimer, I think we fixed it. I think I fixed the GVP for $11 and some change. Oh my God, it's booting. It's booting. It's booting my workbench. I just showed you a month or three weeks ago on WinUAE. Holy crap, or two weeks, whatever it was. These damn, what is it with these gals and pals? If you've exhausted all the weird stuff and all the normal stuff, check those gals and pals. Stick them in your reader. You should get some code out of them. If it's all ones and you blank check that SOB and it's blank, I don't know what's going on with shipping here in America. Is there an x-ray machine that's just obliterating our stuff? Let's see. Number one. Oh, look. Sorry for the crappy resolution. I have four megs of RAM. 3.8, I guess. 3.3? I can't tell. 919016 chip and I think about four megs. I'm gonna do some CLI commands here. Ready me E, new shell, the resolution is ass. Um, remember I built it in WinUAE. Um, CPU, 6830, cache burst, data no cache burst, so sorry for the noises upstairs. Again, kids and dog. Whoop, A V A I L. Alright, so if that is legible, yeah. Four megs of total RAM, three point something fast. I don't know why I have three megs of fast. Maybe it's map roming. One mega chip in use, 133. So yeah, fast in use is 862. So it's mapping a 512k kickstart to RAM some mathematical jewel, math magical way. Why'd you buy all those chips? Because there's four of those same pals and then a comparator. So I replaced. The comparator did nothing. Pulled out U35, which is one of the pals that apparently blow up and apparently did. I don't know why she's blank. Now she's not. So we're going to run sysinfo. That looks a lot better. And we're going to get a baseline of what this is now. So standard Denise 68030, no FPU. 030 MMU not in use. That's okay. I don't have any MMU libraries on Workbench 2. Don't care. Check memory first. We have 4 megs of fast RAM, 24 bit, and 1 meg of chip. That's it. So it must be map roaming the kickstart. It doesn't say where, but map roaming kickstart possibly. Um, speed of the processor says 40. What do we get? 42. Smell the rubber. No, I smelled some burning chips. We are 6,008 dry stones, 11.35 times faster and 8 times fast. There's no, this thing's faster than an Amiga 3000. 1.29. Give her the cold shower tug. You know, when you get out of the shower and you go, make yourself feel better. There you go. Cold shower tug. We uh, really stretching the line here. You know, you all pull the expand unless you're really rolling. Drives, we have DH0, DH1, that's GVP, SCSI.device. I did 512 blocks, the second one 512. I don't know about how this controller chip translate large block size or whatever. I have to read up on the GVP 415 ROM. We were out of ketchup, it was in the cabinet. All right, so let's hit the drive speed. I'm expecting about 800K to a meg. Remember, it's an external bus. 
one mig. So that's about pretty good for an Amiga 500. GVP or not, you know, you're running off the 68,000 bus. It is right next to it, but a mig when you're running an Amiga 500, non Pi Storm stock 68,000 with a real 030 in her now, is she getting hot? Ooh, not really. It's back in action. We got Directory Works. I got Amiga Explorer. I got Opus on here with the Power Packer library. Ooh, fancy. I could play games on this if I really wanted to. Uh, System Info Magic Workbench. Amiga Test Kit's on here. 1.5. We got an older one. As far as the case goes, the case has provisions for, I believe, a fan. 40 mil. It's been ripped out of here. There's sort of pegs of plastic bolts or something. I don't know. Whatever's going back in here is going with the old hot glue method for me. It has vents, but the vents are literally right here. Uh, they're this wide, and that's all the ventilation you get, and one slice halfway. Where would it pull air in at otherwise? Uh, possibly right here in the front there's a little bit of vents maybe that might do something but I don't think it's gonna do anything to give a crap about because every one of my other GVPs I'll just pulled the fan out they used to have like labeling on them as to which pal went in which slot but the replacement doesn't and I got them off that website from I don't know Yugoslavia or whatever it is now it's a couple weeks to get here what happened in my hand well, I burnt it Plug in said jumper, give this the Thailand tuck. Here's our unit together. Very yellow compared to my 500. It's the iced tea edition. That snaps in. The gradient vents match. The lines match. The angle of attack matches. Yeah, that vent would be questionable at best. Let's give her a final boot. Energize the GVP. Energize the Amiga. We should see this all light up. And there's our lights and our hard drive activity, which I'll hold my hand over. You can catch her blinking in all her glory. And we should have Workbench 2 in just a minute with my red light, Chicken Lips 500, Rev 5. Yeah, it's a Rev 3 keyboard and a 5. High tech. And there you go. 4 megs of RAM, 1 mega chip, 5 meg machine. Beautiful. So that is the A530 Turbo 40 megahertz from GVP. Now fixed, had a bad empty erased PAL and some goofy jumper settings and some issues. I don't know where or how they get erased. That is like the third unit I've had that has had an erased PAL or GAL chip. It happens guys, I don't know why. They are reprogrammable electrically is it possible that a static shock could zap these things at one point or time? Or plugging it in might have bumped one of the other um, sidecar slots, therefore shooting power down the rail and doing some science and magic. Only the Amiga gives you problems that are unique per machine. But she lives on again and will for a long time. So thank you guys for coming along on this hopefully fast repair on the GVP. And another one's been saved. Another peripheral has been saved. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more episodes. Subscribe or like or comment if you haven't already. I appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.